to teach and you can share with your students. So with that, let me bring Rushton up. Well, Rushton, welcome to EdChat Interactive. Good to be here. Thank you very much. So um, I guess, you know, I guess we were talking a little bit earlier. You, I, you seem to be doing some work on your house today in addition to all the other things that you do, right? Well, I mean, well, let's be clear. I mean, doing work on my house uh, is, is, makes it sound like I actually have. Um, yeah. It was much more about coordinating contractors uh, at, at this point. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, you, you well, know, that's the way I work. Know, yeah. yeah, one must know where <laughs> one's limitations are. Right. Well, um, yeah, that when we were looking for our first house, uh, what I learned rapidly is to ask if I could see the basement. And if there was a workspace in the basement where somebody had tools, then I knew that the house probably needed it. And that was not the house for us. <laughs> uh, uh, but it didn't do me any good because as soon as we moved into the house, things started breaking anyhow. <laughs> so that's just home ownership, right? Yeah. So yeah, let me bring. That's a good idea. Yeah. So let me bring myself down. Let me bring your slides up, and um, you know you'll just tell me when to advance the slides. Okay. Sounds good. And welcome everybody. I am excited to be able to share some ideas with you. Uh, the idea for making your school something special kind of comes down to the space of what we're all you know. We wake up in the morning, we go to work, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're either driving home thinking, oh, my God, I'm so tired, right? Or we're more in a, wow, I can't wait to tell, you know, my significant other what, what happened and what this kid said or, or whatever it might be. Now, so for, for my thinking, you know, we, we want to be in a space where we are, uh, we, are, we are making the things happen interpersonally, professionally that allow great things to happen at the school, not just for kids, but for each other. You know, I, th I think we need to be in that space where we see ourselves as people who are trying to actually have really you know, good good lives, you know, fun as we go through our day-to-day -day work. And I think that's all, that's all very very much possible. Uh, so go ahead and advance the slide. Uh, I, I, I will note that in all of my slides, I'm, I'm really into using Native Commons license imaging and citing them, thank you very much. Uh, and so if you are into digital media's possibilities, especially for getting kids to think through what it means to work off of the idea of You know, there is this quote from this person, and I learned this because this person commented on it, and this is, these are my thoughts. Just to be able to distinguish between which are your thoughts and which are somebody else's, it's kind of like one of, those, one of those fundamental pieces of being educated. So, you know, I think citing one source is a good thing, just to say about it. All right, uh, next slide which is essentially telling you that you'll get the slides. Now that's actually not a prediction of understanding uh, nor a threat. Uh, it, it's much more a, a thing where I have a link at the end that if you want to, to you know, kind of call up in a, in a browser the different slides I put forward, you can do so. There you go. Uh, so a little bit about my background. Uh, first of all, I was a high school teacher of Japanese language. That is a tremendously fun thing to teach because kids walk in with no preconceptions about their ability, which is pretty cool. They just know that animated movies. That's why they signed up. And, uh, you know, so I had that chance to help them understand that if they could just do some homework and, and begin pushing themselves a bit, they could, they could really make a lot of progress fast with this really kind of cool and very different language. Uh, I became a principal of a K-12 school and then an online high school uh, in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, my wife and I moved back to California and uh, I started this little shindig, Next Vista for Learning, which is an online library of videos by and for teachers and students everywhere, free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from, all for a student audience, all uh, screened content. It's our own little attempt to save the world from, from ignorance, one creative video at a time. So, okay, so uh, that, that's what I do. The revenue that runs this, this, little, this little library and, and the celebration of creative approaches uh, to teaching and learning is, is what I get from being a, a speaker and a trainer. So it all kind of works out. So I want to I want to I want to put a story in front of you to kind of get our, our session going today. First, uh, think in terms of like you're out walking the dog, right? So you're out there, uh, you're walking around, you go to the dog park, you know, there's other po folks with their dogs, uh, and somebody you know ends up you know kind of close by. They have a dog, and they also have like a kid in tow, and that kid is about of the age that would enter your school in the coming fall, right? And so as you get to talking to this person. 
uh, that person finds out that you you teach at this particular school and, and says, oh, wow, that's a school that we were considering for little Chris here. Tell me what's special about your school. Now, see, that's an interesting question, right? What's special about your school? And and interestingly, you know, I think that that by and large, we're, we're not very good at, at that, that are needed for that, right? So what we need are answers, well, that work, right? And so as, as we think about uh, answers that work, you know, we're really thinking about helping parents understand what the experience is that the child will have. So, uh, so go ahead and advance a couple of slides there. Uh, one of the things that you, you often hear is, uh, is people say things like, uh, oh, you see, at our, at, our, at our school, we really care about children. So I've got a little hearts on the next slide for that. Boom, we care. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? We care about it. And useless. It's a useless thing. Everybody cares about children, right? I mean, you're not going to walk into a school where, where their goal is to regularly traumatize the kids. That would be the next slide. Boom. <laughs> at any rate, so when we think about telling people what, what, our, what our school is about, what they want to know is what the children will do, right? What is it, what is it their, that their son or daughter is going to experience? So, so let's get back to that question. Uh, next slide, right? You know, what, what makes your school special? There's all kinds of ways to answer this. Uh, and, and I think typically what's happening is that parents are looking for something very, very concrete. Oh, we have this video production club and they, they make stories about you know, nonprofits in the community and the nonprofits use them to uh, gather new supporters and, and, and you know, that kind of thing, new volunteers. Um, oh, well, we have this, uh, this group that does, uh, that does hiking you know, like every spring in, in such and such park in order to do you know, research, you know, science research and blah, blah, blah. There's, there's all kinds of things that are very concrete about what the child would experience. That, that would make a parent excited about sending the kid to your school. So, so as a question, let's put that out. I think there are a few folks here, uh, and I know that there are going to be plenty of people watching the recording going, hmm, what makes my school special? All good. Um, but, but let's work with that question. What makes your school special? So let's, let's group up a bit and see what, we, uh, see what we come up with. Okay, so this is the time to do one of two things. Either click on the avatar of another person in here and just share with that other person what makes your school special, listen to what makes their school special, and talk about it. Um, or if you don't have a webcam and microphone, uh, open up your IM window, and you can do that by moving your mouse over your avatar and clicking on IM and share it via text. Uh, we'll come up in a couple minutes to um, to discuss this and, and ask for some volunteers. So I'll bring myself down and we'll give you about two or three minutes to talk about this with each other. Oh, and you have the opportunity of sharing this with Tom Whitby also. So, um, so it's always a pleasure to share information with Tom. Okay, let me bring Rushton back up. And uh, I will say that if you're hearing an echo as I talk, then what you want to do is you want to separate yourself from the group. If you move your cursor over the group, you see that there's going to be an, an arrow that will allow you to separate from the group, in which case you won't, you won't hear the echo because you're probably hearing us talk over the uh, speakers of the other people in the group. So, um, so you, know, it, you, were, you know, as you were talking about what makes your school special, you know, I was thinking, you know, how many parents' nights I went to where the principal got up and talked about how this was special because they cared about the kids. That's so and nice. Somehow or other, yeah, that just that wasn't unique. <laughs> Not by a long shot, and 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 that no. that really is our issue, right? You know what what is distinctive, right? What is distinctive about the school? So I was just talking to Lindsay, for example, who's at a school in uh, in the Greater Fort Worth area, uh, you know, Texas. All right. Um, mm -hmm. And and she was talking about well you know this year we went one to one with Chromebooks and I'll, I'll get her to like you know correct anything I say that's wrong but uh, one to one with Chromebooks and committed to going like all the way to twelfth grade in, in the coming year now so so that's that becomes this thing where it's like all right good and that's that's a very solid answer we everybody's got computers what does that mean so we're always kind of guessing like uh, you know what that next question may be like uh, my next slide you know we don't need to bring it up at the moment but it's a chessboard. You know, because you're really mm -hmm. thinking, okay, well, what, what, might a, what might a parent then ask? 
are they going to are they going to think that's a good thing it's a bad thing what does it mean what you know oh that's the way it's all going or or will it be something mm -hmm. more concrete than that so um if 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 Lindsay's good with it well let's bring her up and and have her tell us you know about an activity or two that, that they're okay. seeing there that's really exciting to the kids and the community so uh yeah Lindsay, i'm going to bring you up in a second so i hope you don't mind yeah. Hey Lindsay. Hey Lindsay. So tell a little bit so about like what's happening with uh, with your school. Like you know, it, it, as you brought these computers in, what are, what are kids what are doing, doing that, that, that you know, clearly is really exciting for them? Well, one of the things that we've really noticed, um, particularly in the lower grades, is that students are asking for um, greater responsibility in their assignments because the teachers are able to push stuff out via Google Classroom and there's no more, I lost my paper, I don't have a copy, my dog ate it, and my little sister colored on it. None of that happens. And so the students are able to actually you know, take responsibility for their own learning and they're asking for more assignments that way as well as I was out, I know to go to Google Classroom and go find the work that I miss instead of waiting days and having that time lapse and the learning be lost. We've also noticed our teachers are doing more flipped and blend, blended instruction, whereas they weren't trying that before. They're starting to video and screencastify themselves and present that information to students, which reduces the amount of lecture and gives the chance the kids a chance to create more where they didn't have it before. Yeah. Now, now as you think as you do that, right? So so when we think about like the questions happening back and forth, right? You know, you're sitting there, the dogs are, you know, sniffing each other, all of this is going on. You're having this conversation with the parent. And, and, and you, know, you, you say, okay, wow, you know, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. When you think of uh, of what you know, maybe like a, a particular project that a parent did, or, or, or that one of the teachers did, and, and that a kid produced something that you know, kid wouldn't. Have, is there something that comes to mind where it's like that really stands out, just as a moment, right? Where like okay, this where, like, kid this did kid this. this. Um, well. One of our classes Skype did a mystery Skype with Great Britain, Perfect. which is not something that they would have done before. And because they had the Chromebooks, they were using it to do research and to look up and to find, based on the questions they were asking, find out where the other class was. And that wasn't something that they necessarily would have been able to do before. Lindsay, that's awesome. Lindsay, that's and, awesome. And it, it's exactly the kind of thing a parent would want to hear, right? If, if my kid goes to this school, the kids going to have the chance to talk with people in other countries. Wow, right? And, and that's that very specific thing that allows, um, you know, allows people to start getting excited about being part of the community. So, uh, so, so thank you very uh, much, Lindsay. Uh, I want to, I want to, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah no. rock. Um, I want to zero in on kind of the experience of of the learning activity because one of the things that I think teachers, uh, you, you know, can can spend a little time thinking through. Is the idea of okay well how do we move learning in interesting directions right so i'm going to give you a kind of a framework for thinking about learning activities uh, let's go to the next slide uh, and and i'm going to tell you about four kinds of learning activities and you know this isn't like this this hugely you know big thing because there's no acronym which is a little strange in education but we can deal so the first the top tier is what i call the powerfully memorable right so go to the powerfully memorable right what we're really talking about those things where when you think back to school, when you were in junior high or high school or elementary or whatever it was, right, you you remember this moment where, where you guys did this and there was this going on and it was related and you remember it even now, however long even now represents, right? Uh, and that's the gold standard. That's what we're shooting for. And so like one example I have for that is a little video. Uh, it's, it's about a 25-second about a video, but uh, if we could call that up and... Uh, and kind of get that all set. This is this is a video of a kid who was was all nervous about making a video teaching something, and and we, we talked together a bit and kind of had to get in, into that space. Um, actually, make sure I get the right one. This is the oop wrong wrong video wrong video my bad. All right, um, and so apologies to, to to all concerned. So the the particular video, if you once you get the slides later, you can click on the link and see it. But there was this kid, and and I I had instructed my my class of, of video production middle schoolers. It was the only time I taught middle school, 
Um, and uh, and so, you know, we had this group and, I, and I've, I've taught them how to do this, that we had a project where I said, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to create a short video that explains something. So Mitch, go ahead and move to that next slide. This is this is like a, you know, a screenshot from this video. And, and this kid, man, he's like, oh, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I mean, what do you mean you can't do it? You know, you I've seen you make videos. It's like, no, no, teaching something. I, I suck at school. I said, well, you don't need to use that verb. And what do you mean at school, man? I'm sure there are things you can do. Like, no, no, no. I just really have trouble. I was like, I bet, I'll bet you know like some math tricks or something. No, no, I suck at math. I'm like, well, there's that verb again. And he said, well, you know, I, I know one trick. I'm like, oh, well, let's make a video. So, so he does like the 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 multiply my nines, right? So, you know, here we are. Let's see. Let's get this in. So, nine times four, right? One, two, three, four. Put it down. Now here are your three, your tens, 30. Here are your ones, six of them, six, 36. Nine times four, 36. Ah. So the whole thing was that we end up with this video, which is him showing that he's capable. As a guy who sucks at school, right? You know, he, he's capable of sharing something and help people. And through the rest of the year, he can come to me and say, oh, Mr. Hurley, I can't do blah, blah, blah. And be like, oh, wait, whoop, 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 whoop. That's what you said when we did the teaching video assignment. Do you remember, right? And and what did you do? You made that video about the nines, and then we put it on a little website, and it's out there. And there may be hundreds of thousands of people around the world learning their nines because of you. And how did he respond? And I quote, oh, yeah, huh, unquote. There you have it. So, you know, I mean, I think if kids have those moments where what they do is they they remember that they're capable. Because often, you know, you know we, we give them back, you know, their hand, Grab bad grades back to them again and again, and they're just like, oh man, I'm just no good at this. You know, they get into that mode where confidence becomes this this huge barrier. Okay, so powerful and memorable happens a lot of different ways. Uh, the the next tier uh, is the generally effective, and generally effective is essentially good teaching happening, right? Kids are like, yeah, okay, I get it, yeah, 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 and, and they they can perform on assessments, and you know, all good, all good. So there's a couple of different kind of examples of that kind of thing, and the one I zero in on, next slide. Um, is is the uh, is the student project? So like a student project where where what's happening is you know kids are actually learning you know something about it you know on their own they're pursuing something that they're really interested in they're able to answer questions when other when you know that kind of thing is is effective learning for sure and, and it might even be powerfully memorable depending on how much they get into it. Now it's also the case that it might not be so hot right it might be that uh, you know they just printed a few things put them on a cardboard trifold and like here are my project you know not too cool. So, so any of these things can vary in terms of their power for learning, depending on how the students think of themselves doing it, you know, how the, uh, how the teacher helps them understand that their effort is what is responsible for, for showing real excellence, this kind of thing. So powerfully memorable, generally effective, and then weak but easy. Now this is, this is kind of that default thing where we're like, oh my God, I got, I, I got to teach something tomorrow, right? And so you got to have something ready. And you end up typically in that case with weak, but easy. So like uh, my, my example on that one, right, you know, what we've got is this, uh, uh, next slide. This example of the worksheet, ah, easy target. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, this is fill in time, it's fill in time. Do you get to the end, you know, it, do you get to the end of a worksheet and do you think, oh, I understand this so much better now, perhaps so, perhaps you are the teacher who makes like amazing things happen with worksheets, maybe. But, but the chances are fairly good that what 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 happens with the worksheet is that we're just killing some time, right? And 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 that's that's not good. Uh, it it does it does allow a certain amount of review, perhaps yes, okay, great. But but that's different than the kids really learning it. You know, when they're actively involved, they're intrigued by what's going on. That's when they're when the stuff will stick. And and memorable is a critical piece of this. Now, I mean, that's setting the bar pretty low there, but there is a fourth category, and the fourth category is the waste of time, which is a bit ironic that sets the things out there because we stress about time as teachers. You know, it's like, ah, oh, no, you know, I have so little time, ah, oh, you know, kind of. But, uh, but the waste of time happens, uh, and, and when we think about the waste of time, uh, there, there are several things that come to mind for me. One of them is, next slide, right, the movie. What, movies? No, movie in this context. Everybody's been so good this week. On Friday, we'll watch a movie. Isn't that nice? I'd say no. I'd say that's a horrible thing to say to children, uh, in part because it, it suggests that if we can just all be compliant, we can dispense with this annoying learning thing. I think it's a bad, bad idea. Just me. Anyway, 
So, so waste of time essentially means kids aren't, don't have even the opportunity to look at something and go, oh, oh, right? They have to have that as a, as a possibility. And it's conceivable that, that, a, that a particular video might be very helpful in a lot of ways. My own little business is built around video. Uh, how the teacher uses it is what really matters. I mean, if it's just because everybody's been nice, not so hot there. On the other hand, if you're you're watching a Disney film, but stop it because you're talking about the hero's journey and you gotta you gotta talk through what's happening with the characters, that's a different matter, right? Because you can you can make really good learning activities out of almost anything if you do it right. The assumption is that you're not saying, let's just have a free day on Friday. That's not what So anyway, so th there are four categories, right? And and we're trying to get everything into the top two. You know, the gold standard is that top one, but but uh, that's a little hard to do, right? At least on, on any kind of regular basis. So if we can get everything in the top two, we're doing, we're doing it right now. Now here's the thing. As we do all this, as we come up with moments where, where there's something powerfully memorable happening, we're ending up with successes. Next slide, right? And so the, the, uh, the successes that happen at school, I think are largely a function of being able to tell the stories of what kids have experienced. Oh, you know, this, this, and this. You know, there's all kinds of really cool moments that, that are successes that need to be shared. So, for example, uh, you know, years ago, I was, I was gathering some, some material for, uh, for an accreditation visit, right? And, and I'm on this committee to get this and that. And I'm on my prep period. And I go over to, uh, to Brian's world history class. Brian was a tables teacher, not a desks teacher, right? So two kids would sit at a table, you know, one of these little kind of rectangular tables. And you know they'd powwow for all kinds of things. You know that's cool. The day I walked in, all of the tables were on their sides on the floor. Kids were sitting on the floor next to the tables, writing furiously. And I'm like, what is that, right? So so I I walk in, and I walk over to Brian. He's like, hey, Rushton, what's up? I said, I you know about that accreditation? Yeah. What's going on here? This this kind of what's what's going on here? He says, oh, you see, it's World War One. They're writing letters home from the trenches. Oh, that's so cool. That's that's crazy cool, right? That's a that's a moment, man. That that is a moment people will remember because because they're feeling it, right? They're, you can see it. You can see it in the kids. They're like, you know, they were totally into it. And and that comes from from having a teacher say, well, let's try this this way. You know, this is a little bit different than other things you do. Oh, we're intrigued now, right? Those are successes, and successes need to be shared. Big successes, small successes. I saw these kids picking up trash just because they wanted to save the uh, the janitor a little work. Awesome, that's a success. Another kind of success is actually the success where what happens is that we we think of a cool idea, and and it's something that's on the way. So next slide, um, and and I call that the uh, the success that is brewing, right? And and what we want is is we want to be able to get people on our team to, to talk about cool ideas. So that we're we're essentially celebrating something that might be successful down the road, because we are now realizing that we're people who try things out rather than just do the same old same old all the time, right? So we're you know if if we're all we're doing is the weak but easy or the waste of time, not great, right? So what we want is we want to have those moments where people are like, oh man, you got to try that. Hey, did you just try it? How did it work? Yeah, yeah, it bombed, but I asked the kids what they thought and they had this idea and we tried it again and it was awesome. See now that's a professional environment you want to be in. You want to be in a school where, where that is the kind of interaction that professionals have. So, so that's really kind of what we're shooting for as we go. So how do you, how do you share these things? You know, how, do you, how, do you, how do you work on these things? Well, one of the easy ways to do it is use any kind of survey tool. Like one of them is you know, Google Forms, right? Uh, and, and I'll show you an example of a form a little bit farther down. But you know, gather the successes. You know, when, you, when you get into your grade level meeting, your departmental meeting, start with that. And say, okay, guys, and here we go. Fill out the form. And, and then what comes of the form you can get in a doc, right? Next slide, right? So you can put you know, any of these answers that you really, really like uh, into a, a public facing document, you know, or this can be a blog. I mean, there's a hundred different ways to do it. Facebook uh, and, and have it out there. So there's stories that can be, can be shared. If stories are coming up all the time of cool things happening at the school, people can be like, oh, that's, that's really quite a, quite a cool thing going on at the school. You know, they're gonna feel that way when they get to see it. But the problem is that we have all these successes and we don't tell anybody. Why, why, why on earth would it? Well, it's because if somebody says, hey, this great thing happened in class today, there are other teachers who will be like, that person's bragging. Well, you see, that's a great way not to figure out what you need to be able to help a kid who needs help. 
And I think what we need to do is say, tell me about the cool thing you did. I may need to try that because I got a kid who needs something different for sure, right? So we need to be in that kind of environment, as I see. All right. So, so thinking, thinking a little bit farther into this, I, I want to I, I wanna show you a, a video of a success that, that I think is really crazy cool. And, and apologies, Mitch, for, for having called up the wrong video. video uh, my bad on that one. But this video is by uh, some folks at a school in San Jose, California. Uh, it's about a special day they have called Dads and Dudes. So give us, give us that video. here and this is literally one of my very most favorite days of the year, the day we bring all of our dads and special dudes to school. It's definitely the kids, one of the kids' favorite days. Just to see the activities, what they've learned through the beginning of the year. I get to hang out with my dad. I get excited about coming to see my boys. Two boys here. It's the best day of the year. I love it. I'm just spending the time with them, getting to know the teachers and meeting the other dads. I love Dads on Duty Day. We get to play games. Look at the engagement. All the kids are having so much fun with different dads. The dads are so funny. They joke around, they play, they even wrestle, which is not okay. But I love Dads on Duty Day. Um, probably I get to hang out with my son and help him out. Uh, interacting with the kids, seeing the kids, seeing, watching my son interact with, the, with his uh, classmates. I enjoyed everything, uh, meeting all the dads, playing with my kid, you know, being inside the classroom. It actually, this kind of makes me want to come even more often inside the classroom. And I think it's, 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 it's a great feeling to be, you know, play with all the kids and get to know better the other kids. And I think it, besides, you know, you can see in their faces, they're super happy. They really enjoy this. Here we begin. We are the EDS Huskies. Every day we listen, learn, and laugh. We are responsible, respectful, and cooperative. We promise to take care of our school and our world. We believe in ourselves and never give up. Believe it! <laughs> we are EDS Huskies! So I would say let's take about 90 seconds or so and, and then just share kind of quick impressions of that video. What, what kind of things come to mind? What, what were the questions that may have popped into your head? But let's take about 90 seconds and do that. Okay. So, and I'll bring myself down also. And again, this is a time for people to click on avatars of somebody else and share with somebody else what they thought about the video. And you know, I'll, I'll guarantee you that, that whatever you saw in the video, somebody else will have seen something different. So we'll come down and give you all a chance to talk. Okay, let's come back up. Okay, so yeah, it was, um, I just was remembering back when my kids were in school, um, how I would, because I work from home, 
so how many times I would just come into school and into their classes and it was just you know just the great times I had observing and um, you know taking part in their classes it just yeah. like brought back great memories for me well well in doing so right I mean that told a story mm -hmm. that connects with you personally yes you know yes like I was talking to Rania who is in Edmonton you know very cool um, and mm -hmm. and she and her first her first response was that was awesome now anytime a school creates something and tells a story and the first reaction someone has is that was awesome something's right 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 you know, Mm -hmm. that that's what we're shooting for you know what what kind of things are going on you know um you know tom or Lindsay uh or yaskara if anybody else would like to would like to toss in uh a, a thought you're certainly welcome to do so yeah i'd like uh maybe somebody can just click on that raise hand button in which case i'll bring myself down uh plain old boring me and uh bring somebody bring one of you up who's really interesting okay good here comes somebody Hey, Tom. Okay, that should be better. Can you hear me now? Yep. Speak loudly. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I hate to be negative here, but here, here's my response. You know, I love the video. I thought it was great. Um, I, I found myself looking for um, matching up the, the parents with the kids to see who belonged to them. Um, that didn't work well. But but what about the kids whose fathers couldn't show? Well, that's not negative at all, right? As a matter of fact, one of the things that you want is to be intrigued enough by a story that you start asking the detailed questions. Hey, if we were to do that, how would we deal with it if if kids their their dad didn't show, right? So that means you're moving in the right direction. Now now in this particular case, they get about a third of the uh, students. To, to have a, a dad or a special dude who comes, right? Because it's not just dad. So, you know, right. your, grand, your grandpa could come or like maybe there's a, there's a neighbor that families are close to and that person is there. There's a number of different possibilities, right? Um, but they, they structure their activities so that, that everybody's getting to kind of be with a lot, of, you know, you're not just with, just with your, your dad the entire time. Um, so I, I like that they, they seem to have nailed a, a really important kind of thought about that. So no, no, nothing negative about the question. Good. No, oh, I love the video. I thought it was great. But you always have the most interesting videos. Yeah, so, well, you know, a, a good video, a, a good video kind of moves the heart, right? And, and so yeah. let, let's get into that idea a bit. When, when, when we think about uh, what makes a school special, special and uh, Mitch, go ahead and bring the slides back up. We'll, we'll take a look at some of these pieces. There's a story to be told, right? There's a story. What's the Actually, story? would you mind, uh, Lindsay raised her hand. So can I bring Lindsay back up? Sure. Okay, good. Okay. Hey, so Again? I just Again. wanted to comment that what went through my brain was we have a watchdog program at our schools where dads come in and sign up to come just one dad and i was thinking how nice it would be, how nice it would be it would be to would be to do it but it's just that was my thought okay so here here's what i love about your comment right you know so you're thinking okay um, you know, we, we've got we've got a program where, where dads can come in and one one at a time, and and now you're thinking, well, how do we how do we capture their experiences such that it tells a little bit about what what our school is, you know, and is there somebody whose job it is to go up to the dad at some point and be like, hey, you know, can can you give me 30 seconds worth of your thoughts about what you've seen today, and and you know, I mean, if people are capturing that, you know, booze, you know, shoot it right, you know, share it via the phone straight to YouTube. You, know, you could even go to youtube.com slash editor and pull these things together with transitions. Oh, you got a video that you can share. It, it, it is one of those things. And I think, that's, I think that's really cool. So now tell me this, Lindsay, when you look at that video, do you think about the watchdog uh, program and think, how can we improve it? Is that part of how you think about it? Is that part of how you think about it? That was what I was thinking is, is um, the watchdog program is about one dad you know, in isolation. And that program was more about a cooperative, collaborative experience. 
And so I was thinking, how could we keep what we have but add to it and maybe do one day where all the dads get together or all of the involved father figures who come and serve have an opportunity to be together in one day. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, thank you. Um, let's let's bring up uh, let's bring up the, the slides to the right 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 where it was when we left it. We should be seeing like uh, what strikes you about this video. I think on on the slide. And and I will tell you this: there there is one thing that strikes me more powerfully than anything else in the video. Although the, the, although a lot of it is quite emotional, really. It's the very last line. And, and I'm wondering if you remember it, right? So the very last line of the video, Mitch, give us the next slide. This is it. An event every school should have, right? Think of the power of that. What are you doing at your school that is so phenomenal that you wouldn't want any child anywhere deprived of the experience? That's how good it is. Now, if, if that's how we're thinking about what's going on at our school, you know, I've got this thing. How could we make it a little better? How could we make it better so that the video that tells that story would be something compelling to others? How do we get to that point where we're like, no child should be without this pro this project, this activity, this program? Those are the directions that we go in order to begin to stop and say, man, I work somewhere special. I really do. We we make this happen. You think back to the discussion with the, uh, you know, like with the person you're walking the dog. Well, you know, we have a day every year where the dads come in, and you know, we do all this and this, and you know, they really connect over it, and they really feel connected, and we feel like we've got you know, dads participating at our school at a level that's really, you know, kind of unusual. You know, I'm real proud of that. That's that's concrete, right? That's something that you know where a parent can go, wow, yeah. You know, I mean, you want parents to feel that that very specific sense of, okay, you know, what is it we can do? So I promised earlier that I'd show you a uh, um, a uh, a form, you know, like just you know, like if, if we were starting a departmental meeting or something like this. Here's what I had in mind, right? What's cool at school? What's cool at school? How simple is that, right? What's cool at school comes down to what's your name, what's your email address, what's the cool thing you saw, and and this is the kind of thing that we don't talk about enough. So let's let's build it into our systems, right? The beginning of our meetings, let's put it there. Staff meeting, let's add it at the beginning of the staff meeting. Why not, right? And after that, you can you can spend some time talking about the stuff that came in through the form the last time, where people are starting to say, oh well, you know, you know, uh, you know, Mr. Mitch over here was was telling us about you know this this thing in the form. Uh, Mitch, talk talk a little bit more about that. And people are like, hey, yeah, that's great, that's great more and more positive, right? Because if the positive isn't there, I tell you that void will be filled with complaints. There will be complainers that are like, I know I'm speaking for everybody. They're wrong, but, but you know, the void is there, so they have to fill it. So we have to kind of be in that space where we're like, we're making some positive things happen. Well, let's talk about how we'd use like the next part of the meeting, because I want to talk about what it means to be like an exploratory culture. You got to have an exploratory culture at your school. People get excited about cool, positive things and are making more things happen. And that's not just because everybody's upping their game. It's because people want to try new things. So give us the uh, give us the new uh, the next slide on this, right? So when I when I think about this, you know, I'm thinking about all kinds of technologies like this. And the, the you know, actually, I go back one slide. My bad on that. What you see at the at right here is the resources page on on my nonprofit site. But there's a lot of sites with a lot of free technologies on it. Think about this in a meeting, though. All right, everybody, here's a site. Go in, find a tool you've never heard of, spend 15 minutes with it, and come back with at least three crazy suggestions as to how they could be good for, for student learning. Crazy is a big word here, by the way. At least three is another big term, right? We want people to be creative, and to do that, they have to start pushing themselves. So often there's, a, there's an obvious answer. Well, kids could use this to do this. Okay, yeah, we all know that. And we'll be polite about that, but keep going. What's the next thing? What was the next thing? Is that crazy? Are you having fun with it? Did you laugh while you did this? If so, you're doing it right. Right. That's what we want is, is to get people kind of exploring those things. Now go to the next slide. I'm so, sorry to like take you on the roller coaster with this thing. But now you know, we start thinking, well, tech, tech, I don't know. There's a lot of people that are kind of scared of tech because it's all kind of moving so fast. Next slide. Right. You know, there's there's so much tech happening all the time that it just it's just this big blur. Well, is it, what do we do? What do we do? Well, let me tell you. Next slide. We'll be OK. And it'll be okay because, frankly, you're not responsible for learning all technology. We feel, oh, I'm so behind on technology. Look, your job is to discover one or two or three really cool things and to try it out. That's it. You know, if there's stuff that's like you need to learn, it'll happen, right? But if you go to a conference or something, you go to FETC, I mean, ideas are like swinging around all over the place. People are totally jazzed about sharing stuff. You, and you get to the end of the day and you're, you're, your head's ready to explode. Like, oh, no, what am I going to do with all the ideas pouring forth? 
and that kind of thing, you have to be able to stop and say, okay, wait, what's the thing I'm most jazzed about? I want to I give that a shot. I want to I mess with that. I want to try it out. All right, you know, that's, that's how it's going to be okay when, when you're really focused. My job is to get jazzed about a couple of things and try it. Do, do, do. Not just say, oh, that would be cool. Do it, right? And then you talk about it, and then that's how we get in cool places. Next slide. Now, looking at this slide, if you don't look at this slide and think to yourself, cool, then you and I are very different people. I look at this and I'm thinking, that's crazy cool right there. Like, uh, how, how much fun would it, be, would it be to have like the, the lazy boy vehicle? At any rate. So what, what, I'm, what I'm wanting to introduce with this idea is what it is that we think might be really cool for our schools. So think for a minute on that. Like what, what would be really, really cool at your school? So next slide. And let's take uh, let's take another 90 seconds or so and just just you know crazy answers crazy answers what would be crazy cool at your school? Okay, you know the drill. Hook up and uh, discuss. Yeah, you know, so I was thinking, it's like, so what would be a really crazy thing at our school? And I was saying, well, what if we went a semester and didn't have grades for a semester? Like, wouldn't that, wouldn't that be amazing? Um, but that, you know, that, that would be crazy. It, it, uh, it, would be, it would be crazy nuts. And I'll tell you this, the, uh -huh. the people who'd be upset about it are the people who are normally very successful in school. They're very successful the way things are. Please tell me what to do. I will do them. I will get good grades. I'm at the top of the heap. Let's not change anything. And mm -hmm. kids who are like desperately needing something else to begin seeing new possibilities for themselves, they'd love it, right? Uh -huh. And then, you, then you, you just have to connect them like with that success with, with the sense of, we do need you to show that you are, you know, that you're doing something, you know, like meaningful here. How, how, how do we know you're pushing yourself? Well, I did this and this. Yes, you did. Can you tell me about it? Can you write about it, right? How do, how, do you, how do you prove it? You can do this stuff. I've watched you do it. You can do it. You have to be able to tell the story. Now we're getting back into schools telling their stories. Schools have to be able to tell their stories as well. Right. And the other thing that, that occurred to me was that um, you could come up with a list and here, say, here are the five really cool things that I recommend that you do. But what, what what's even better is when the schools themselves come up with the things, because then it's a lot more meaningful than you or even you know or me for that matter you know saying well here's here's an interesting thing that your school should do it's like it's, it's much better when the school comes up with it right it's a beautiful insight and and, and i i think of it along these lines right we're mm -hmm. often trying to systematize things oh you know how, how do we make this program fit in right. this school and blah 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 look mm -hmm. the really cool stuff happens because we recognize that individual teachers are letting their personalities cut loose and say, we're going to make this happen. And I'm like, all right, guys, let's go. Who's with me? Boo! You know, and, and they go and they create these things and people are like, that's amazing. We've got this amazing program. It's almost always personality driven. So, mm -hmm. so one of the things that happens at a, at a school that's really special is that leadership has, has, has essentially looked at the teachers and said, Talk to me about the stuff that you're really, really passionate about, and how can we make that a part of what these kids can experience? And oh, I right. think that, that 
that's a place that parents are going to want to send kids. Kids are going to want to be. Teachers are going to want to work. That's what we're shooting for. Um, so I'd like to stick, you know, maybe even, and I know we're running out of time, but I'd, I'd love it if somebody who's participating here today would come up and, and say at least one crazy thing that they're going to, um, they're going to propose to implement in their school. And I'd love yeah. to see somebody raise their hand and volunteer that. But if not, I can come down and put your, pull your slides up, but oh, come on. Uh, let me do this. I, uh, I talked with Lindsay uh, again because Texans, you know, like hang out. Um, and, and she was talking about she was talking about a very cool thing. It's like, you know, I'd love to see a space where where it's, it, you know, there's it's just very, very different. And, and, you know, how kids would you know be able to come in and sit and try different things and and was thinking differently about space. Right. Because we mm -hmm. talk about, you know, like, you know, how, how inspiring is it to go sit in a row? Not so much. But if what happens is you go into a space and you're looking around, and you're like, oh, wow, what is this? You know, what can I do here? Suddenly that's different. She, you know, she's got that. She's like, oh, I'd love to see that happen. And I, and I, think, I think that's where we are. I, I really do. I think we're kind of at a, at a point where we can stop and we can look at something like cool spaces or, uh, you know, or uh, like the, the, you know, the, the, the two, one or two weeks that happened between semesters where, where there's just kind of, you know, courses where teachers are just teaching things that they're really passionate about. And, your kids come in, it's not for grades, and just experience some stuff together. There's stuff that's happening. And the mm -hmm. question is, how does it happen? Does it all happen and is suddenly successful? Of course not. What happens is that somebody says, let's try this, you know, or maybe someone says, let's try this. And the principal says, what would be a step along that path? What would be a little thing we could do now to, to, to help others kind of see what we're talking about with this? Because often the really cool successes come because, you know, someone is thinking, I need for people to see that story so that they'll buy in, you know, and, and you, know, you have people that are like, this is my vision. It's like, okay, let, let, let's walk ourselves to it. You know, if it's not going to happen between tonight and tomorrow, then what, what's the next step? And, and, and politically along the way, you know, how do, how do we get people to say, yeah, we, we should kind of give that a shot. So Mitch, that, this might be a good time to hit the recap. Uh, okay. Wanna, sure. I'll bring it. Yeah. Bring on the slide. Boom. So the recap. The recap. So you know, thinking about like the last hour worth of material, you know, there there are kind of four things that I'd like to I'd, I'd like to kind of zero in on. So we'll we'll take those uh, one at a time, slide by slide. First is we're trying to move learning towards the powerfully memorable, right? Let's give people experiences that they'll, they'll be able to describe and make other people go, wow, I wish I'd got a chance to do that. I want my kid to experience that, that kind of thing. Uh, the next is that I, I think that our successes need to be discussed, needs to be brought out. We, we need to have them out there as opposed to just being quiet about them because we're afraid it's going to bruise somebody's ego. You know, can't do that. The next thing is that, that we have to have that culture of exploration where people are trying things out, you know, with technology. They begin to think of, you know, like, oh, you know, let's, you know, let's see what this, this could be in the classroom. And that's related to the fourth thing, which is envision the cool and make it happen, right? One step at a time. I think that that's how we get there. So my next slide is actually the, the, uh, the non-transparent version of the first slide. And it, it's, uh, it's actually the sun god turning into the jaguar at night so we can go hunt, right? Or at least that's what I was told at the Mayan ruin I visited, right? And why not? But as I see it, it's that cool thing waiting to happen at the school, the waiting to get out. It's the stories that are waiting to get out and, and tell people, like, people got to hear this. That's how I see that particular slide. The next slide is a shameless plug. And that looks a little funky on my screen, but all good. So what it is, is the, um, it's the book. I wrote a book called Making Your School Something Special. And it's all about, uh, you know, like making learning activities all the more engaging and, and, and effective, about telling the stories of success and building individual confidence with students and teachers. And so I hope that that's something that people will, will look at and say, ah, oh, you know, maybe I should do it. And if you follow the, the link to, uh, to the, in the, in the final slide, which is the next one, final slide, right? In that, in that lower right there, you see that thing, tinyurl.com slash rh dash eci dash special. And, and what that is, it will get you back to all of the, uh, uh, all of the slides that I have there. You can sign up for my newsletter, send out stuff, you know, follow me on Twitter or Instagram or whatever you like. Um, but but 
email me as well. I'd, I'd love to share ideas with you. I think that one of the coolest things I get to do is, is hear people's stories about the cool things happening at their school and, and then to turn it around and tell other people and then, you know, they find some way to make it even better. And then you know, the first person's all excited because then that's a new thing they can do. You know, that, that's fun stuff. And the more we, we reach kind of beyond our campuses and talk to people and bring the ideas back and say, hey, you know, what's the, what's the next step that can make that happen? Better off we are. And there are a lot of really cool things happening at school. And um, I'm willing to wager that because of the work you do with schools, there's even more. And I'm hoping that it's an accelerating process. Uh, it has to be an exciting time for kids now with all the technologies that are coming that are, that are coming out um, with uh, teachers in many cases being able and willing to experiment more um, getting away from the the rows and I, I love the idea of the, the the tables on their side so the kids could imagine themselves in the trenches writing home um, that's got a lot of different applications. You could you could use something like that for virtually any history lesson. Um, you know, getting kids to write about, uh, you know, personify themselves inside the experience and and write about it. Um, yeah, it's 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 an exciting time. And uh, what's your session going to be at uh, FETC? FETC. Okay, so I got several sessions at FETC. Uh, I, I, I'll make several suggestions, and I'm like, sure. I'm like, what did I just get myself into? So one <laughs> right. is a uh, uh, is a they're all, they're all a little bit leadership focused, but when I think leadership, teacher leaders are a part of that as well. Uh, one is called using digital video of school successes for PR and team morale. All right, and so we'll, we'll take a look at some different tools and how to go about that and how to you know think about getting getting stories out there in in good ways. That's on Wednesday. On 11, um, on, uh, at 11 o'clock on Thursday, here's the title, Enhanced Staff Meetings Using Free Technology for Collaborative Professional Development. And I think you know where I'm going with this. I think we've all sat in a staff meetings where we were like, if there were only something sharp I could thrust into my skull, right? And right. so, you know, you, know, you know what I mean, right? And so, so I'm thinking yep, it would yep. be all the better to have people thinking about what they could do in that staff meeting that would be far more effective and, and engaging. Uh, that afternoon, I'm doing a session called Preparing a Staff for Major Change. So if your colleagues are people who are like, I don't know about that change thing, then, then you know, this is, this is one of those things that, that might be good along those lines. H how to think about getting people in a frame of mind that, su such that even if the change you want doesn't happen, you can make your team better as a result of the process. Bit of a punch mm -hmm. line on, on part of that. And then on Friday, I'm doing a session called Making Your School Something Special. And uh, I'll give, uh, you know, it, it's built along the same framework as what we just did, but with, uh, but with, with different stories and other examples and, and things like that. So um, I'd, I'd love to have some, you know, anybody who's in the session or has watched the recording or come up to me and say, hey, I watched Ed Ted Inter Interactive, you know, and I watch it all the time because Mitch is a great guy or, or you know, whatever. And, well, thank uh, you. Man. Yeah, well, you, you seem to obey the rules of hygiene. All good. Uh, so, so yeah, I hope to see some folks there. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll be at a couple of them. I'm, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, seeing you in person, not just on video at FETC, and looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible at FETC as well. I'll probably be hanging out to a certain extent at the Bloggers Cafe. You'll probably be there as well, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great place to to meet and greet other people. I, I, you know, you learn more by interacting with people, even than you come to then then at the sessions. So, um, so I'll I'll see you next week, Preston. Uh, thank you very much for appearing on EdChat Interactive. Hope to see you at a future EdChat Interactive as well. And uh, this is Mitch Weisberg. I'm signing off for EdChat Interactive. Our next session will be February 9th with Celia Martinez, and hope to see you all there. Take care. Bye.